Hi, everyone. Welcome to this new episode of our Student Spotlight series, where we're able to showcase some of the work that our past students have been doing. I'm Daphne. I'm one of the podcast hosts here at CCIR, and it's our pleasure today to have with us Anna Elisa. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, like how old you are, how long you've been with CCIR, what grade you're in, things like that. Okay, so my name is Anna Elisa. I'm 16. And I joined CCAR in November 2023. Yeah, and I'm, I'm on 12th grade, yes. 12th grade, amazing. Very cool. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit about your research um, and which professor you were paired with and how you found the program so far. Okay, so my research is called um, Towards Sterilizations. Uh, the case in a community in Brazil. Uh, and uh, my professor is Dr. Hansa Gossel, which is an amazing teacher, an amazing professor. She is joined in the uh, University of Istanbul and in the Cambridge University. And we've been studying uh, some, some subjects about uh, gender and health. And so that's why I chose sterilization to study. And okay, so my article talks about the a case of, ster of forced sterilization in politics in Brazil during the 90s. So I'm talking about uh, a genocide in this indigenous community during the 1990s uh, due to uh, a political idea and uh, for votes, he was, uh, this political was doing the sterilization, sterilizations for votes, for getting the, the community land. And yeah, that's a little bit of my, my research. Amazing. That sounds really fascinating. And I, I'm wondering, have you done anything like this before? Or is this your first time undergoing this kind of a research project? Not really. I've, I've had some other research, but they're all about and music and art and so it's my first time uh, studying health and um, uh, genocide and it's really different actually it's important of course I'm avoiding uh, a new perspective and it's, it's really important but it's actually it's really different of everything I, I've ever done so it's been a challenge but I, I'm really liking it amazing and how did you choose this topic? Okay, um, actually, there's a not a uh, very common topic really in Brazil. It's not a common story, but um, I've come to a family of people who study indigenous communities. And when I heard about this story and how it's not um, really told about not everybody, not even in Brazil or in the world, I've been really wanting to to tell this story for for everyone so it's and almost like everything yeah so it's almost like a political issue for you as well as an intellectual and educational one exactly exactly this um that's amazing that's really cool yeah um are you looking to pursue things like this further and kind of meld your influence or your interest in politics with your interest in intellectual education and study and things like that you want to like pursue a political path almost totally um politics politics is um has been always something that i really enjoyed um like i, I love watching tv watching the news and understanding how politics works not only in my country but all over the world and um, this experience this research is being so much important to understanding how the world works and how poli uh, politics it's such an important thing but also can uh, when it's in the wrong hands can cause so much pain and so so terrible things so it's also it's really important how uh, we pay attention to this how uh, it's important that the populations are always alert for this these things don't happen again Definitely. And how do you, how did you find that like kind of com combination of medicine and politics for this paper? Was it tough to combine these two disciplines or was it interesting or what was that process like for you? 
yeah it um i've been studying a lot of other r researchers that um uh, con conjoined this the, these two things um so but it was a, a little bit but um yeah that's actually what i'm going to talk in, uh, one of the things that i'm going to talk in my article how the body and the health are combined with politics and how people with power can use their body to uh, can use their health to make influence on you on your people on your community so yeah it was kind of hard to finding um research about it finding another's um another people that have studied this but when i did find it, it was awesome it was like mind opening no definitely yeah and talk to me like a little bit more about this um phenomenon that you're studying in particular so tell kind of those of us who don't know anything about it like me um uh what exactly happened and what was this political story that you found so fascinating okay i'm going doing like a resume here but um and during the the 19s brazil was in in a phase of rec reconstructing our de uh, democracy because we've spent um more than 20 years in a um in a rigorous uh, government like a dictator and um poli uh, politics like uh, government and like governmental people were uh, looking for ways to find votes and people for voting them and also in brazil uh we have a huge problem about the indigenous lands because the indigenous people don't have the, the rights to their their lands they were here first so they have this right and so in this case specifically um uh one political uh, joined with a group of farmers want their the indigenous lands and decided okay if we exterminate these people we are going to get this so uh the idea that he got was to uh, exterminate this, those people by sterilization uh, that we called um like i don't know if that's the right name in english i'm sorry but it's a surgical it is it's surgical it's right um mm. and he forced those women to do this this surgery but it was um that's interesting because it was a different kind of a forcing he uh, destroyed their their self esteem and how they seen and he, he he told them you're only you're only going to get husbands or look pretty if you can't have children anymore and that's how he he spent uh, he makes a whole population to stop having children and um a lucky a good thing at this 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 population resisted they exist to these days but um they are um uh, still struggling to have their their legal land and to can live as as anyone having um having a good life in, in the places there are theirs before it's ours you know before it's from the white people so yeah it's it's kind of a hard story to explain because it it conjoins so much stuff about history in brazilian history but in in, in a way it's just how indigenous people are fighting for their land and are struggling to so much stuff things like 100 years old or more that is truly an amazing story i did not know that that's that's really interesting and a very heartbreaking story as well um yes it is yeah, yeah definitely i think in a lot of countries indigenous people are displaced and um eradicated from the face of the earth um in america as well we have such yeah. a history with um the trail of tears and the native americans that it, it really is it's often a brutal history um and often it continues to this day um as well um so did you kind of look at the influence of the idea of a nation in your in your article because i feel like that is quite uh, an important facet when talking about 
politics, medicine, forced sterilization and indigenous groups, because you have this one group saying, no, this is our country. We're claiming this land. We're naming it. And you are not in our name. So how did you um, look at the idea of like nationhood and like the name of this is Brazil and you are not in us, you are separate. How was that kind of aspect of it for you? Did it feature in your paper at all? Thank you for this question, actually. It's an amazing question. Um, I've been studying a lot the Brazil constitution to understanding how this works. And yeah, how, and also racism and genocide how these people do not want the original people here. You know, like the indigenous people, they do not care being called Brazilians because there also are Brazilians, but they want what is there for their rights. So, and that in the Brazilian constitution should be a right for them, but it's, it, it, it does not work. Um, unfortunately, it does not work this way. And um, yeah, so... Uh, it, it, I think it's missing um, like an, um, a, a group uh, way, you know, just basic racism. We don't want to hear, we want you to get out, we want you dead, yeah. No, definitely. And there's that aspect of, of a kind of paper that says, no, you are not in our constitution. It's kind of almost like written as law. It's like inscribed yeah. in language. Oh, interesting. No, definitely. Um, did you did you find that in the process of researching this, a lot of what we see as happening in real life, in reality today, has roots in these kinds of physical, historical documents? Like, it's kind of based in these kinds of handwritten, like, papers? Is that kind of what you found, or...? Yeah, totally. Um, I've actually been using a lot of historical documents in this research, because uh, when we're going to understand their um, their concepts of life and land, it's such a, a long uh, research. And actually they're just seen as people in the Brazil uh, constitution and government since the past maybe 30 or 50 years old. It's such a short time don't worry, I was just wondering, like, in, I guess I'm wondering, is what we see as happening in politics today, are they all kind of connected to these documents that you're finding? Like, oh, that actually has to do with what's happening today? Or like, oh, you're reading this and, oh, but look, it's still relevant today. Or is it is it that kind of a thing? Like, was it surprising for you to find stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, um, this for example, in Israelization, uh, this happens since um, the, the disco discovery of Brazil in 1500. And, uh, but I've been studying in a specific time in the 1990s. And today I haven't found non-legal documents that these things still happens. But uh, the, the reason why they happened is still, is still is going on you no know? so they're right. still fighting for their lands they still suffering genocide in other forms of uh, in other forms of, of ways so yeah not in this specific case that i'm studying but totally they're still fighting and that's totally a, a historical thing and i hope in the next few years in the next government this can be over or, or reduced Yes, no, definitely. So it's kind of continuing to this day in different forms of oppression. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you see a way forward? Do you see, like, what do you think it will take for stuff like this to stop happening? Yeah, I, it's missing uh, indigenous people in the government. Totally. Yeah. It's, mi it's missing people who can represent them. And that's not only in Brazil, also in America and yeah. uh, in Australia, in, in a, a lot of other countries. We, and when we have a, a huge concentration of indigenous people, so it's, it's missing people who can speak for themselves. And when this happens, I hope they can um, get their freedom. Definitely, me too, yes. I, I think representation 
in a political way is the most effective route to kind of combat this because you have exactly. that like you have that factual physical thing of this person is actually in the government making real change um, that is then represented through politics and historical documents that we might be looking at years in the future. Um, no, definitely. And I'm curious, what was the most challenging part of this project for you and that you kind of felt like you overcame during this? Okay, I, I, first of all, uh, finding documents because this story is not well told, uh, well said, uh, well speaking. And second, trying to to talk this, to these people because it it was it it, it still is a a, a difficult uh, subject to speak and it's recent although it has thirty years is something that the person who would never for, never forget and right. so talking to them like uh, understanding their feelings it was hard and I actually couldn't do it a, a lot of uh, interviews as I wanted because um. It's a hard subject to speak. I they wouldn't feel comfortable, but it's totally fine. I could find another ways of finding data, but yeah, I think that was the hardest part to understand what their feelings because I will never pass something like that. So it's uh, in a way it's kind of hard to understand something that you will never pass through. Right. That is amazing. So you actually conducted some interviews with people who have survived this. Yeah, I've known I've, I've known some people who who, who who passed through this. I couldn't do actually a lot of uh, a lot of interviews for this specific article, but I've known them for a, for a time, so I could talk to them before and also like during the the, the research, but not uh, in a formal interview you know right wow that, that must be i don't know it must really inform your paper in a very human way like you have that human aspect of wow i actually know someone who has spoken to me yeah. about this and you can actually hear their experience that's that's incredible wow um yeah and that that's really incredible um so i'm wondering so your data that you were mentioning um, was that comprised mainly through like historical documents that you found online, like Google Scholar, JSTOR, things like that? Or have other scholars written about this? Like, was it kind of a mix of primary and secondary sources? Or what was the process of collecting data for you? I've actually, I've been a little bit lucky because uh, knowing these people, they could um, give me a lot of documents that aren't in the media. So I have a lot of um, brain new uh, documents for my article. So yeah, but it's mostly bibliographic research and, and document analysis. Yeah, interesting. Um, that's amazing. So you can actually almost break a new story that hasn't been told in the media before, potentially. That is very cool. Um, yeah, and talk to me a bit about what's happening in Brazil today with indigenous groups and their oppression, like for steril sterilization, as you said, may not be happening in the same extent, but what is happening and why does it have to stop? Okay, actually in Brazil is, um, we have a, a huge discussion also about the, in, uh, the indigenous lands, the their territories, because we have a, a project of law who wants to, Take away all of the all of the indigenous lands who weren't proclaimed by him by them. Uh, I I think it's um, in nineteen eighty eighty eight. It's the year of our constitution. So every lands that weren't pro proclaimed after the constitution would have been taken away. And this is so so uh, problematic. If it happens. We we'll, we we'll destroy a lot of indigenous people because they will be taken away of their lands, including the indigenous people that I'm studying. They couldn't be uh, they couldn't be in their in their lands, and they also I, I'm also I'm always speaking about their lands, but I think I have to explain explain it. Their lands here have um, not only um, a, a sentiment of participation in their, their group. But it's a religious thing. Uh, their land, their land for, for them. 
and I think in the rest of the world for indigenous people are religious, they have a, a connection. And so it's important to, for them to keep it, to, to raise their child, their, their, ch their kids in the, in, in this territory. No, definitely. It's almost like a connection to like your home, like your birthplace. Yeah. So, okay. Um, if this um, project of law being accepted, it's going to, to ruin their lives. And we're, it's, it's happening a lot of projects here lately um, for this what happened, but we don't know what's going on. So it's actually um, a sen sensitive time for indigenous people in Brazil. Wow. Um, is there anything that the public can do to raise awareness and to kind of combat this being passed? I believe that if you Google it, you can find um, like online uh, online protests that you can like vote for this won't happening. But I, I think I can send them, but I, I'm not pretty sure if, I, if, if this is still on internet. But, but if you... If you go and Google it, you'll find, you'll find some information. I can, I can send it to you later. Amazing. Yeah. To kind of raise awareness for this. Cause it's, it's also, cause your paper is studying a historical issue, but what's interesting here in your specific project is that this is still continuing and it's still happening. So it's almost like it's, it's, it's a continuous thing, you know, it's, it's still going on, which I think makes your research more relevant than ever actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm also wondering, um, in doing a project like this, do you feel more kind of comfortable undertaking similar ones in the future? Do you want to start doing more research? Or do you feel more prepared to kind of go off on your own and do other, like other, other topics and other things that you're interested in? How was that kind of, was it a challenge? How, how do you feel having now completed it? Um, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to say it, it was emotionally easy of writing because it's such a, a difficult subject but i definitely feel more prepared and understand the importance of the of these things and the whole world to understand it so yeah definitely i'm going to do other research about it and maybe other other forms of power how power is uh, is in our society so yeah, it was a, it's not an easy subject, but it but it's it's important and it's important to have people doing it. So yeah, I definitely feel more prepared and going to do more. No, definitely. I think very very well said. Um and I'm curious if you could so let's say for a new research project in the future, if you could study any other topic, what would it be? Okay. Um I think I, I haven't thought of that. Um, maybe I would still, I liked studying, studying these forms of power and genocide. Maybe actually my, my first idea was to study sterilization of indigenous women in all uh, Latin America, but it was, it would be such a long, uh, such, such a long research and I couldn't, I, I didn't have the time and and the paper, okay, it, it wouldn't work. So probably I would continue on this in other Latin American countries to uh, to spread the story and how how uh, women, um, poor women, black and indigenous women are, are passing through this in in Latin America and in all, all the world. That's incredible. No, definitely. Um, I think especially because this topic hasn't like closed its chapter, there's still racism happening against indigenous groups all over the world, not just Latin America, like we were saying earlier. Um, and there's still sexism in medicine and politics, I would say still happening. I think it's, it's like you were saying, more, more relevant than ever. Um, so that's, that's really interesting. And I guess my final closing question for you is, if you could offer any tips and tricks or words of wisdom, pieces of advice for other students who may be starting a similar research project, uh, what would those be? Okay, um, listen to the people. Uh, they know what, what they passed. 
they know where they are still suffering. And the, the, uh, the most important data that you're going to find more than bibliographical research is to listen to them, understanding their story, because uh, they are the ones uh, who, are, um, who are passing through these. So they know it more than anyone, more than any other research who, who, who try to explain. They know it more. That's, I think, so important and very well said. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today, Annalise. That was very nice to meet you. And I very much look forward to reading your paper sometime soon. Um, and I think the work that you're doing is really relevant and really important and very challenging. So I very much commend you on that. And it was very nice to hear about it today. So thank you so much thank for joining us. Thank you so much, Daphne. Thank you so much to CCAR to let me talk here. So thank you so much. I've been really honored.